friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm glad you could join me here today. I have a really fun project to share for you today. I've been working with Authentique's gorgeous Jubilee collection, which is their Easter springtime. This is the six by six pad. And this is just so beautiful. And I kind of got carried away. I couldn't stop creating with it. So I actually have three finished projects to share with you today and one that we're going to build together. It's a new kind of easel card, but just look at these vintage images. So sweet. This is 6x6, which I did work with a little bit. Mostly I use the 12x12 12 collection pack, which comes with the sticker sheet. I love it. It's fantastic. So first of all, I made a little home decor piece. This is so cute. This is Eileen Hall's trinket box and I've done this up with the papers I covered a little chipboard bunny added this little Easter egg some pretty little flowers a little um, tag and ribbon closure super cute and this has a spool on the bottom so it will stand up for display now, I don't know if you can see inside let me try to get that in the frame but I altered a Tim Holtz um, trophy with paints and embossing powders and gesso and then I filled it with Spanish moss and these adorable little petalou flowers just to kind of make a little springtime home decor piece and something you can set out on your countertop or on your table on your mantelpiece super cute so that's Eileen Hall's trinket box and authentic Jubilee then the next thing I made was just kind of a fun Easter card. I love the images. It's so deliciously vintage. The colors are beautiful and soft. So here's a really fun little top fold card that has a hidden um, tag pocket up here in the corner. Isn't that fun? And I did that just by, I put a partial layer down and then glued this over top and just rolled the corner over a pencil. But just a fun way to present a little card, some little Prima resin eggs, more of these little flowers, a little wood bunny. And then on the inside, I've got this fun um, tea bag pocket at the top with decorated with stickers. See how cute these stickers are? And then the bottom has a larger pocket. Follow the bunny, he has the chocolate. Good advice, people. A little honey stick. To go with the tea bag and in here is a little trio of Ghirardelli chocolate treats so that's super cute and super fun and then um, I did an easel card tutorial where I showed you how to make two different kinds of easel cards and then I discovered another way to make an easel card how fun is this can you see that maybe it's better this way yeah isn't that cute this is a center um, fold easel card and of course this folds down and decorated this up these are little birdie crafts flowers I just love them for Easter they're super cute and then this lovely um, citrus dots organza ribbon from really reasonable ribbon and a little tag over here on the side and you can't open this card this is meant mostly just for display if you wanted to you can add a pocket on the back here and tuck a note or something in but I just think this is so stinking cute and I thought we would make one of these together today so let me gather my supplies and we'll get our craft on the first thing you want to do you're going to need um, one whole sheet and probably actually two because I like to mat. If you don't want to mat your images, one sheet is plenty. But if you're like me and you like to mat them, you're going to need two. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of craft card stock that I've just trimmed down to be seven inches wide by 10 inches tall and then scored in the middle on five. Easy peasy, right? And this is our base. And then what we're going to do on the inside, this is the back side of the cut apart page. I love this geometric pattern and this shade of green is just perfect for springtime. This is actually going to glue. Yeah, there we go. 
And of course, you don't have to use liquid glue. That is just my personal preference. And you just want to glue this down toward the bottom and like that. And I know it doesn't match on the sides. So don't worry. It's this bottom edge. This was a scrap piece that I had. It's this bottom edge that I want, and you'll see why. So the next thing we're going to do, let me put my pin back in my glue bottle, is we're going to come back to the front cover. And you're going to either need to use one of these cool trimmers that allows you to line up, you know, your blade, or you're going to need to use a craft knife and a ruler or a pair of scissors. But whatever you choose to use, you want to put this card in, and we're going to go from the left hand edge. We're just going to line this up at one and a half, and we're going to make our cut. All right. So now you've got this little flap thing. So flip the card over and do the same thing on the other side, lining it up at one and a half inches. And you're going to cut just to the fold. Don't go beyond the fold. So you can do that with scissors and draw a pencil line, but you're going to end up with these three flappy things. And that's how it's supposed to look. So then the next thing you want to do is bring in your scoring tool. And if you don't have a scoring tool, you can use a ruler to do this, and that will be perfectly fine. But this large flap that's in the middle, you want to score in half. So this is five inches. So one, two and a half is where we're gonna make our score line. And this is gonna become our easel mechanism. So now that we've done all of that, as you can see, none of this is hard, and we're just going to burnish this down like this. And now we're going to cover it. And for that, I have cut this piece of this gorgeous, kind of shabby chic print. This is um, six and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And I should have glued this down before I did my cuts. So pretend I did. <laughs> pretend I did. I watched the grandchildren today. So my brain is not functioning. So I'm just going to add glue around the edges of this. Of course, I made one of these this morning before the kids got here and it went like clockwork. But I'm just going to do like this. And, um, then you're just going to glue this, oops, get it going the right way, glue this down, and then I'm going to have to make those cuts in that score line again, but that's all right. That means you get to watch me do it again, and you'll remember it that much better. It's like I tell my granddaughters, there are no mistakes in crafting, there are just opportunities to learn a new something new. So let me just bring this cutter back in. This will just take a second. So remember, we're going to line this up at one and a half. And we're going to cut. Just like that. See, no worries. No one's ever going to know. Then we're just going to line this up again here. One and a half. Oops, get my blade down at the bottom. Right up to the fold. Voila. No worries. And then bring my scoring tool back in. So see, it's like repetition is good. It'll solidify it in your brain. That's what we're gonna say. So score at two and a half. And then this is the easel. And that's how that was supposed to go. So thanks for bearing with me. A little little detour there. We took the scenic we took the scenic route, and then we're just going to burnish this on the fold. And then I like to ink my edges. Um, I just think it gives everything a more polished look. So this is just vintage photo distress ink, 
and I'm just going to lightly ink all these edges because this is this kind of completes that vintage look. So there we go. And that only takes a second, but I think it makes such a big difference. Now, keep this big middle flap up. We're going to glue these two side flaps down. Just like this. So there's one. And there's two. And I wanted to do this card because I wanted, to, well, I wanted to show you how to do this cool easel style, but I also wanted you to see how versatile this collection is. Because those are all Easter cards. This is not an Easter card. This could be a condolence card. This could be a get well card. This could be any kind of card you want it to be. So now we need to create, well, now we're going to bring in, we want to decorate these two side panels. Because I just like the way it breaks up the pattern. You certainly don't have to do that. You can leave it exactly like this if you want to. So these strips measure one and a quarter by four and three quarters. And I've just matted them on this same craft cardstock. Um, and like I said, this for me, I just like the extra design and dimension. And I like the way it breaks up the pattern. But it's lovely just the way it is so don't feel like you have to do this of course it's always hard to get things getting things straight that's why I use liquid glue because it just gives me the extra half a second to line things up but if you're a ATG gun or a or a um, score tape kind of girl you just do what makes you happy. I'm a liquid glue girl. Okay, so now we have this. See how I just I just like the contrast, but that's just my personal preference. Then I also cut from the back side of this beautiful gray stripe. This is pretty pink pattern, and this piece measures three and three quarters by two and an eighth. And I also matted this on just a slightly larger piece of craft cardstock. And this is going to go up here. So I kind of like the way this almost looks like a mosaic. I really like that. So now we're going to lift our center e central easel. And this is going to be our focal, where flowers bloom, so does hope, which I think is such a beautiful sentiment. And this is from the Cut Apart page. I just cut it out, inked the edges, matted it on craft paper. And we're just going to glue this to the base of this front panel. So this top half, no glue. Don't glue. Got it? So just on the bottom half, add your adhesive, whatever you want to use. And then I'm actually going to do like this so that I can't accidentally glue it over that fold. Because if you glue over the fold, what happens? That's right, you no longer have an easel card. It'd be pretty, but it wouldn't be an easel. This way, gluing this way, there's no danger of that happening. So this is what it's going to look like on the back. This is the front. And then this becomes our easel. And now you see this beautiful green print that we added at the beginning. And you see now why I said it doesn't matter the width of the sides or whatever. Mostly you're just interested, your, your concern is getting this lined up. So every easel card needs a stopper. And for this one, I took this sticker from the um, sticker sheet. The beautiful spring came and when nature resumes her loveliness, the human soul is apt to revive also. And this is gonna sit right here. And we want to back this with a dimensional. And you can use foam tabs, you can use foam tape, you can use whatever dimensional you like. I'm cheap. I like to spend my money on pretty things. So I save shipping boxes and cut them down or waste chipboard or 
um, anything like that. And then I use those as my dimensionals because nobody sees it. It doesn't matter. And the cool thing is this is a craft card. If I turn that craft side up, the sides actually blend in really well. So we're just going to position this just like so and we want to make sure it's even on either side so I'm just gonna move this over a tiny bit so there's that that was easy and then I want a bow because I'm all about the bows and this is a um, pink chevron striped twill from really reasonable ribbon and I think this time I'm gonna glue right down in this lower corner and a lot of you you always ask me about my bows and I always tell you I will probably never do a bow tutorial because if you go to really reasonable ribbon .com and or I'm sorry go to really reasonable ribbon on YouTube and find their channel and they have every kind of bow tying tutorial you can possibly imagine they use a tool called the Zutter Bow It All, which I have in my stash and absolutely love. And that is how I create all my bows. And you just practice, practice, practice. You develop your own style. This is just a burlap string bow. And I'm just going to add a dot of glue to the center of this here and put this down. Pretty, pretty. And then. I fussy cut this little girl from another one of the um, cut apart cards and I think and I waited because I wanted to see where everything was going to sit I think I want to attach her right here on the side of our focal image isn't that cute and it just adds that extra little um, pop and so I'm going to just put a little piece of chipboard down here like so I might want to go over just a little bit actually yep let's see yep that's perfect and then I'm just going to put some hot glue on this attach my little girl and the little sweet little birdie isn't that precious how beautiful look at that I just love that and then I want to top this these are little birdie crafts flowers aren't they gorgeous they're all handmade in India this is the Wendy carnation and I think this is just the right shade of pink for this card and it just goes with the sentiment about blooming flowers and hope and all of that. So I'm going to put some glue on the back. Glue this down. I love that they include the leaves because foliage on a flower always makes it look more real. And I think I want another one right here just to balance that out. So just like that and keep this straight just like that that's pretty and then I've got this little um, this is a cut apart from the 6x6 pad it says find beauty in the small things and I just want to tuck this back behind that flower and it's okay if it hangs over the end a little. Let's stick a little glue here. There we go. That's looking really good. And so you can see our progress so far. See how that looks? And then the last thing I want to do, I think, is add a button. I meant to bring this. This is my jar of vintage buttons. And I like these little ones that look like flowers and I've showed you all this before this is a button tool you can get this in any sewing notions department at most stores and it just goes over like if you have a button with a shank on the back it just clips that off flat so that you can um, glue 
it level. Okay, and I want something underneath that little button to anchor it. So I just tied a really teeny tiny little string bow. It's gonna go right there. And then our sweet little vintage style button. It's gonna go right on top of that, like so. That's a really pretty stopper. And then just to anchor this flower up here so it doesn't look quite so lonely without a bow, I tried this little string bow. And I'm just fluffing it. I'm pulling those sections out because it's a triple loop. And then what we do is we just come back behind here and then take the point of your scissors. Don't ever do this with your fingertips or you're in for a rude surprise. And then just push that in there and then fluff it out. You have a moment or two before the glue sets up completely. I think that's really pretty. I don't think we need to add anything else. I think that's done. But wouldn't this be just a beautiful, I mean, you could put this on your desk at work just to cheer yourself up. Let's put one more button up on the top of this little tag. And then I think we're done. Let me fish out another one of these little, yeah, here's a little one. I like that. Hold on, I'm going to tie another bow. Okay, I actually tied two bows <laughs> because I like to, because I love them. No, actually, I just think it gives it a really nice finished look. So we're just going to add a tiny spot of glue at about the center. Put our string bow down. See how cute that is? It just kind of dresses it up. It just is like the finishing touch. And then that really sweet little button. And then fluff this one out. And you know what I'm going to do with this one? I bet you do. If you follow my blog, if you've watched me before, I bet you know exactly what I'm going to do. Oops. Okay. There we go. Looks good. I just want to tuck this in down here just to kind of finish this off. So a little hot glue, line that up, use your scissor to push it into place. And see, it just adds that little extra layer of texture, which I love. And it fills it out. It makes it look really full. So I think we're done. Isn't this precious? Where flowers bloom, so does hope. Authentique Jubilee. All kinds of beautiful, these beautiful center step easel cards. Quick and easy to make, right? But they look like you're a card making genius, but it's actually just a really simple cut and fold. And this really fun bunny and this really cute trinket box. That's it for me today. I hope I've shared some tips and tricks and ideas that you can use in your own crafty adventures. Um, if so, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to have you along for the journey. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to go get...